Yo, it's Corey at Floodway and I just wanted to make a quick video about replacing and testing the lasers on your Rock Automatic. So, let's go. Okay, so I don't know what it is with these little laser pointers, but even the ones we got on eBay and set up for our manual press, eventually they just go kaputs. Now, if you have a Rock press and you bought it kind of recently, you have a great warranty. Now, they're probably not going to fly a tech out just to diddle around with these wires. And so that's part of my problem, especially if you're in Canada, they're not gonna fly a tech out. And since they're not gonna fly a tech out, you are probably gonna end up with some video chat call that needs to be arranged with the tech for them to show you how. But that's gonna be during the day because the techs work during the day and that's when our press is spinning. So I thought since this is like my fifth time changing these lasers that I just record this video, show y'all how it's done. You can watch it anytime, do your laser anytime. And hopefully this helps another person in the same situation as me. So before we get started, we need a couple things. I mentioned that you're probably most likely doing a warranty replacement on your laser. So Ryan is gonna send you something like this, just a little bag with your laser in it. You're also gonna need a two and a half millimeter, that's it, right? Two and a half millimeter Allen key to get this going. But the most important tool of them all, I think, is the uh, digital multimeter. Um, like I said, I replaced these lasers like five times and no one ever thought to ask me to check the voltage and it turns out that the technician that installed my press had wired it wrong and it was sending a higher voltage to the lasers burning them out in like a week or two and kind of went down that road for a little while before we thought about checking how they were hooked up so I urge you to get a multimeter they're super cheap and it's helped me with other problems in the shop as well so watch for a good sale and get this on your list now the only other thing i don't have here is if you don't have a multimeter you're going to need a little like flathead screwdriver to push the wires out and i'll show you that a little later when we get into it oh yeah and it's after hours so you know i got a cold one going let's dig in before we dig in since we're working so close inside the press here and since danger doesn't take a day off and since you should never trust the machine we're going to release the star and put the safety bar in so that we don't have too much to worry about when we're getting in here. Okay, so I know I just did the safety first thing and that we're working with electronics and stuff here, but even though this is the most satisfying switch to turn ever, we gotta keep the press on because we need power running to those lasers so that we can check the voltage. First thing we gotta do is take out these two and a half mil Allen key bolts and the plate and you see that the power supply comes out all with it. Now, remember I said I did this like five times before? I did not remember that I labeled all the cords and that felt awesome when I pulled it out, remembering that everything was all dialed in. So, quick shout out to the Dymo label maker, not a paid post, although Dymo, if you're watching, I would take an upgrade. I just love this thing, helps keep us dialed, as you can see. I got a quick tip here, because even if you're not trying to film it, like I am, it's still a whole handful of stuff you gotta deal with, right? You've got the two probes, you got the multimeter and everything. So my first tip, and I came up with this on the fly while I was doing this, cause I needed a way to hold the multimeter on camera, was just to put a simple little magnet on the back of the multimeter. That way I could tack it up on the press. And the second thing, I did this last time, it's pretty good I think, is to screw the, the whole panel back on, like backwards and then it kind of mounts it there. You can push with the probes, you can do all your testing, and it makes it a lot easier. So those are my two little tips before we start the testing here. So I mentioned I wanted to do testing, and that's what we're gonna do first, because if we wire this all up and it's wired wrong from install, like mine was, we're just gonna burn out lasers like crazy. I don't really know how your multimeter works, but on mine, when I showed a picture to the tech at Ryonet, he said, and I'll read it here, uh, to turn your dial to 200, as the arrow indicates in the photo, and that your black lead will go on the right side, and the red lead will go in the center. So that's what I've got. And first thing we're gonna test is the yellow and black wire that's going to the gray block, labeled lasers. And we're expecting five volts there. And then we're gonna test the black and red wire that's going into the 24 volt DC. It should read 24. And we're also gonna check one of the like outs to the lasers. So if we check that, it should read five volts, right? So if you're not getting those same readings that I'm getting, either you're doing something wrong or it's wired wrong. So take a really close look at how ours is and use that for comparison's sake because we know ours is correct 
and that should work for you. If it's not wired right, you're going to be burning lasers left and right, or it's just, I don't know, I assume it would not work at all. So check that out really close before you hook anything else up because you don't want to burn out those lasers that you just got. If the testing went good, then we're ready to hook up these lasers. So I've done this a couple times, like I said, and every time I'd shove the wire through, I had to take the whole arm off. I thought it was a pain in the butt. So this time I tried to fish the wire through and you can see here I tied a knot to a speaker wire. I was all excited to tell you that it's better to know a knot and not need it than to need a knot and not know it. And that's what the situation I was in. I, was remembered, I remembered this knot and I was all ready to pull it through and it just didn't really work. My knot was too big, I guess, or something. So all I can say about fishing this wire through is to pull as much slack through on your existing lasers as you can shove as much of that new laser wire through as you can and once you have the arm off you should be able to pull from the other end and that will kind of help that extra wire get around the corner there they and then you can come. hook it all back up. Oh. Remember I said that if you don't have a multimeter you're going to need a little flathead screwdriver or something? That's what I'm talking about here because you need to push the end, the top of the block in here to release the wires and to also put them in. So if you're not doing the testing, you're gonna need that screwdriver. And if you are doing the testing, you can just use your multimeter like I'm showing here, it works pretty good. And that's about it. Once it's hooked up, your laser should be on. If it's not on, either you missed something with the multimeter or you've got a dud laser, but it should be working good for you right now, like ours is. You can see we got three and we're back in business. Okay, so that's a wrap. Thank you for paying attention and tuning in this long. I know this video was for a pretty small amount of people, but if you liked it, if you found it helpful, hit that like button, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. But most importantly, let me know in the comments what you thought and what you wanna see. Cause if you're having a problem at your shop or you wanna see how we do things, that's what I wanna know so I can knock that video out for you and for our screen print community. So hit us up in the comments, hit me up in the comments. It's just me really. I wanna know what's going on. I'm down to chat about process screen printing anytime. So thanks again for watching and stay tuned for the next video. I'm out.